The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, keep those you have given me true to your name, so that they may be one like us. While I was with them, I kept those you had given me true to your name. I have watched over them, and not one is lost, except the one who chose to be lost. And this was to fulfill the scriptures. But now I am coming to you, and while still in the world, I say these things, to share my joy with them to the full. I passed your word on to them, and the world hated them, because they belong to the world, no more than I belong to the world. I am not asking you to remove them from the world, but to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. <coughs> As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they too may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today we are celebrating the seventh Sunday of Easter. And now a few days ago, on Thursday, we celebrated the solemnity of the ascension of the Lord, right? Now I think most of you would have come for Mass that day, in the morning or in the evening or wherever you were, maybe in KL, right? Because it was a day of obligation. Anyway, if you miss Mass that day, at least know that we celebrated yeah, the ascension of our Lord. Now, if you read the book of the Acts of the Apostles, you will know that after the ascension, the apostles, they went back to Jerusalem. Even the mother of Jesus, Mary, also went back to Jerusalem and they were spending time in prayer. Yeah? And before the coming of the Holy Spirit, Peter actually remembered a prophecy in scripture and he says that the place of Judas needs to be taken over by someone else. So that's what we read in today's first reading. In case you were wondering, why were we reading that? Yeah, so today is the day when we have the election of Matthias to take the place of Judas. And next week, we will celebrate Pentecost. So we are following uh, the proper uh, schema of things, yeah? the, whole, the progression of events that took place. So the ascension, the election of Matthias, and then the descent of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, which we celebrate next week. Now, on Ascension Thursday, we read the gospel where we saw Jesus going up to heaven. The apostles saw him going up to heaven, but before he went up to heaven, he commissioned them, he sent them out to preach the good news to the whole world, to all of creation, it says, and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, So that's also something very important. And I'm bringing it up again in case some of you were not around for Ascension Thursday. So at least you won't be missing that important part. So no, Christ went up to heaven. Before going up to heaven, He sent all of us out on a mission, the, the apostles, and he told us to go and preach the good news. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, if I were to ask you, what is the good news? Do you know? Do you know what you have been sent to preach? If you do not know the message, how are you going to preach it to anybody else? Right? So this is a very simple question. What is the good news? Okay? And this is the answer that you should know. And in fact... You can find it in today's second reading. So the first 
the second reading today is from the first letter of St. John. And we had this very beautiful reading about how God is love, about how He sent His Son Jesus into the world, and that we are to acknowledge Him, that how God lives in Him, and He in God, and how any one of us who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in Him. Now, this is the most basic message that is the good news that we want to preach. Okay, So now let me state it in a more complete manner. This good news that we are supposed to preach is that God is love. First point. Do you remember that? Okay? Right? God is love. So this is very good. Now, related to this point that God is love, also other small points like God is good, God is truth, God is light. Most important, God is love. Now, it's such a good news actually because there are many people in the world who do not know that God is love. For some, God is punishment. God is policeman in the sky, catching me for all my mistakes. God is there to dictate the, my life and determine this and that. God is a controlling freak. So many gods out there that people are having in their mind. And worst of all, God doesn't even love me. For such people, if you were to really show them the proof of God's love and to tell them that God is love, I tell you, it will transform their life. For us, of course, we've been hearing this from the time we are children. We might take it for granted. <laughs> it may have no impact on us at all. Okay, God is love. And we'll sing another hymn, God is love, God is love. And we don't even appreciate it anymore. Because why? Familiarity breeds contempt. And that's the problem that the Christians will have. After receiving the good news, we won't appreciate it anymore. Okay, But it, the fact is there are a lot of people out there who not only do not know that God is love, they also do not feel loved in their life. And that is one of the greatest sufferings that a human being can go through when they feel unloved. Yeah, So... Even we can experience that as a Christian, eh? even though we know God is love. But concretely in our life, maybe our parents didn't love us, maybe our spouse is not loving us, maybe our children are not loving us, everybody is not loving us. So even you might not believe that God is love because you are living only in a world of pain and suffering and nobody loves you. Now if that is the case, then truly it is a terrible existence. And it should not be. Christ came into the world so that such a situation should not exist anymore. That is why we need to preach the gospel. That is why we need to go out to the whole world. And to make this reality of God's love present in the world. So every person who believes that God is love and worships the God of love and becomes a sacrament of love with such a person in the world, there should be nobody who should feel that they are not loved. So you see, even our vocation, whatever our vocations may be, today we are celebrating Mother's Day. Yeah? Mothers, I hope your children, they feel loved by you. You may be the first experience of God's love for them. Know how important your vocation is. And if you have not loved your children, and after that you see that they are leaving the church, they are leaving the family, everything... Is it really a surprise? Okay, anyway. There's nothing comparable to a mother's love, some will say. But if really you have had a good mother, and yet there are children also who are abandoned, you know? And children even who hate their mothers also got, sadly to say, you know? Because maybe abused or neglected, something of that sort, yeah? All right, but again, so happens Mother's Day. Speak about mothers, huh? not attacking mothers of any sort, huh? okay? <laughs> Applies to all vocations, fathers, husbands, wives, whoever you are, priests also, yeah? Even we, we are fathers of our community. If we don't show love to our people, of course also they leave the church. Isn't it so, right? So we all are in this same boat. So remember, the first aspect of the good news, God is love. And actually, it is a tremendous revelation. And let us not take it for granted. Now, not only that, God is love. And because He loves us so much, He sent Jesus into the world. 
He, Jesus, died for us on the cross because He loved us, each and every one of us. And today, brothers and sisters, He prayed for us in today's Gospel. He raised His eyes to heaven and that whole Gospel we read actually is a prayer. His prayer to the Father in heaven, asking for our salvation, asking for God's protection upon us, asking that we should be consecrated to the truth, asking that we should be protected from the evil one. Jesus prayed for you, my dear brother and sister in Christ. Know that. And you are here today because the Father has given you to be a disciple of Jesus. The Father has given you and I to be a brother and a sister of the Son of God. You are chosen and you are loved. Do not ever doubt this. You know, being a Catholic is not about whether I'm having a religion or not. That's not the point. Don't reduce our Catholic faith just to one of, a relig one of the religions in the world. That's all. Another system of belief, another faith system. It's more than that. We are the family of God. We are the brothers and sisters of Jesus. We have been chosen. And we are loved. This is also good news, is it not? Yes. And with this good news, you don't need to force anybody to come to church. You don't need to tell anybody, day of obligation, you must come to church. If not, mortal sin. That is not the way that is forcing a religion down people's throat. We are not here because of religion, my dear brothers and sisters. We are here because we are the family of God. And every time we come together, this is a reunion of the family. There's no need to force religion down anybody's throat because that is not what we are about. Okay. A bit fiery. I hope the news is still good. <laughs> Some people are afraid, you know. You, no, no, father's not angry with anyone. Just I want to emphasize the point. Know what we are professing. Know why we are here. That's important. It's so important why we do the things that we do. Okay, now coming back to the topic, the good news. You have an idea what the good news is? You know? So Jesus has sent you to go and tell the good news to the world. Are you confident now? You know what is this message you are supposed to bring to the world? Yes? Yeah, and it's not about my religion is true, this is the true faith and all that. No, it's not about that. What we are supposed to preach is what I told you just now. God is loved. We are the family of God. God wants to love each one of us individually, personally. And He wants us to experience the joy of salvation. And in Jesus Christ, we experience that. That is why we are Christians. Now, if you are a person who has not experienced this, then actually you are not ready yet to preach the good news. Okay, never mind. Put on hold. Go and experience the good news for yourself first. Be transformed by the love of God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, yes, start the mission. Go and proclaim the gospel. All right. Hmm, okay, that's actually the homily today. There's other things I want to talk about, but never mind. Uh, today, Father started Mass late already, somehow. <laughs> Okay, never mind. It's enough. Even you understood this one point is good enough. Yeah? And uh, I hope that this is really a good news that will carry us on throughout this week. And as we receive the Holy Eucharist today, let us really give thanks to God because God truly loves us. And in Jesus Christ, each one of us is personally experiencing that love. And each one of us is becoming a sacrament of love.